In Activity 1, Living and Non-Living, students are introduced to and explore the differences among living, non-living, and dead things. They first observe an assortment of objects, then determine the characteristics of living, non-living, and dead things. Finally, students classify various things as living, non-living, or dead. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 1, Characteristics of Living, Non-Living, and Dead Things chart, and masking tape. You will also need to provide a living animal, a stuffed toy animal, a felt tip marker, various non-living objects, dead plant and animal parts, an artificial plant, and a living plant. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 1 for each student. Gather examples of living and non-living things, such as a living plant and an artificial plant, and a toy stuffed animal and living animal, such as a gerbil, goldfish, or turtle. Also, collect a variety of non-living objects, such as a stone, a metal spoon, a glass, a shoe, or a paper clip, and a variety of parts from dead plants and animals, such as dried leaves, a dead twig, or a chicken bone. Prior to the activity, display all the gathered materials on a large table in the classroom. To begin the activity, give students time to explore the materials displayed on the table. Point out the living animal and the stuffed animal. Ask students how are these two things alike and different. Students should have observed that while both are animals, one animal is a real living animal and the other is a toy. Next, lead a discussion on the words living and non-living and help students understand that the two terms have opposite definitions. Inform students that a living thing, such as a real animal, is alive and that a non-living thing, as in the toy animal example, is not alive and has never been alive. Then begin a sorting process by placing the living animal and the toy animal in separate distinct locations on the table. Instruct students to identify which plants are living and which are non-living, and to place the real and artificial plants in the appropriate locations on the table. Then focus the student's attention on the chicken bone. Students should note that the bone came from a living thing, a chicken. Introduce the word dead and explain that a dead object is something that is no longer alive. Ask students, is the bone a living or a non-living thing? Or does it belong to a new classification? Lead students to understand that because the chicken bone is neither living nor non-living, it belongs to a third category, dead. Place the bone in a third distinct location on the table. Then have the students name different organisms. They may mention various animals and plants. Work with the students to sort and move all the other materials on the table, discussing each one as an example of a living, non-living, or dead thing. Guide students to understand that looking at the characteristics or traits each thing possesses are the best way to distinguish between life cycles. Display the characteristics of living, non-living, and dead things chart and point out that living, non-living, and dead things have different traits or characteristics. Then ask students what can living plants and animals do that makes them different from non-living things. Students should notice that most living things can move, breathe, eat, take in water, grow, and reproduce. Record students' responses under the heading Living. Use each listed characteristic as a point of contrast between living and non-living or dead things. For example, ask students, can a non-living or dead object grow? Students should answer no. Write cannot grow under the headings non-living and dead and repeat until the chart is complete, showing how the characteristics of living, non-living, and dead things can be compared and contrasted. Based on the completed chart, ask students to summarize the differences among living, non-living, and dead things.
Students should respond that living things can grow, move, breathe, take in food and water, and reproduce, while non-living and dead things cannot. They should also understand that dead things were once living things, or parts of living things. Some non-living things were never alive, such as a stone, while other non-living things are made out of materials that were once part of living things, such as a leather shoe. Leave the chart posted in the classroom for reference throughout the module. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 1 to each student and have them identify each pictured item as living, non-living, or dead. Encourage the class to refer to the chart to classify each item correctly. Then, instruct students to complete question 2 and draw and label one new member for each classification. Encourage students to share their new member responses. For each item, have them identify which characteristics led them to their classifications. Lead a discussion about any items students may have incorrectly labeled as strict examples of non-living objects. For example, point out that although soil contains such non-living materials as rocks and sand, soil also contains other living things. Emphasize the relationship between living and dead and encourage students to think about an organism's life cycle. All plants and animals go through a series of stages as they are born, grow and change, and finally die. Finally, point out that in upcoming activities such as Activity 2, Plant and Life Cycle Begins, students will learn about the life cycles of many different living things. To conclude the activity, return the masking tape to the kit. Make sure to leave the chart in its display position throughout the module. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.